Welcome back. In this one, we're gonna allow users to update their password. Now, before we let them go to the change password page, we wanna make sure that they're logged in first. Now, this would be the same as if, you know, they're trying to go to the profile page, same thing. We want the user to be logged in first. Go back to index here. So if we click on change password, we're logged in, we can go ahead and plug that in. Now, we wanna make sure that they enter the old password first. You might ask, well, we had them log in first, why do we have to have them enter this again? Well, even if we're using our authentication middleware, well, the user could be away from their keyboard and say if someone else walks up, we don't want them changing that password on them. So uh, just a little extra layer of security. Let's go ahead and put in our new password and we'll make sure we take it twice because we want to make sure that they entered it the same both times. Okay. Password was successfully updated. Go ahead and log in. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and take a look at our code. Now, notice that our path here at slash change password, now this first one here is to display our form. Now, both of these are actually going through this router group, group here, our auth router group. So we wanna make sure it goes through the user path and that it runs the auth middleware before we go there. Same thing, like we said, if you're going to go to see your profile, you wanna make sure that you're logged in first. So if we take a look at this one here, like we said, it's just going to use the HTML method on our gen context, and it's gonna go ahead and pass in HTTP status code okay. We're gonna say, we're gonna use our parsed change password.html uh, file, and we're not passing anything in. If we look at that, uh, just like we just saw in the browser here, we can pass in some messages, we're taking the old password, we're taking the new password, and we're re-entering the new password to make sure it is the same, that these two are the same. Back to main.go. And, oh, I forgot, when we hit the submit button, we hit the submit button, well, the action it's gonna take is at take us to the path at slash user slash change password. But this one's gonna be a post method. So if we take a look, let's go back up to the top. So to display our form, a get method at, sorry, user slash change password is going to use our change password get handler. But if it comes in as a post at slash user slash change password, well, then it's going to be the change password post handler. Let's take a look at that one. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and create our variable u, which is of type user, which it says all of our variables about our user. And then we're going to go ahead and retrieve, we're using gorilla session. So we're going to go ahead and uh, grab our session. So we know if this person is lo not logged in, well, they're not gonna get this far because that middleware, that auth middleware uh, would run first. Let's take a look at that. So it's gonna make sure that user is logged in. And if not, well, we're gonna go ahead and send them back to that login page. And a C abort is just saying, hey, we're not gonna run any other middleware in that middleware chain. So in case you had more middleware. Um, and c.next just says, hey, we're done with this middleware. Go ahead and go to the next middleware in the chain. So, um, anyway. We're gonna go ahead and grab our value uh, user ID. And yes, since it's interface, we're gonna go ahead and change it to a string so we can save it as uh, ID here or the user uh, field here. The ID, as you can see, is of type string. So we gotta make sure we have this here. Then we're gonna go ahead and get the user ID by, I'm sorry, get user by ID. And this one's just simply uh, creating our select statement. Hey. Select all from users where ID is equal to whatever we pass in. Uh, db.query row, because we're expecting just one row. It's going to take this statement that we just created up here, and we're passing in this user ID to uh, you know select that row. And we're going to go ahead and scan everything out. And each one of these scans is going to fill one, I'm sorry, each one of these parts here is going to fill one of those fields in our user data type. And of course, if we run an error, we're gonna go ahead and pass that error back. So if we do run into an error, well, we're just gonna say, we're just gonna send them back to the change password.html page. 
and just say, hey, there was an issue changing the password. And of course, the return will help, will break out of this, uh, our handler here, uh, should we run into an issue and that error not be nil. We're gonna go ahead and grab from our form both of the uh, new passwords. So we have our new password one and two, and we wanna make sure that these are the same. So new password one, if it is not equal to new password two, well, we're gonna go ahead and send them back. So gen.context using the HTML method, HTTP status bad request, because they didn't enter those both correctly. And we're gonna you know, use our parse changed password to HTML template and passing in our gen.h, which is our map, which we only have two things in our map. It's just a message and the message we're passing to the user is new password and re-enter fields uh, do not match. So they know that those need to be the same. So we're gonna go ahead and validate our password like we have here in the past. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we set that password into our uh, user field password. And then we're gonna run that method on our user type validate password. And it's just gonna tell us if it uh, has enough entropy. So they can look at it. Um, we're just using that package uh, to validate it. Uh, we're using this phrase password validator, but it is at GitHub. Uh, Wag, Wags Lane, go password validator. Not sure how I actually say that, but uh, we're just going to let me go back to that validate password. So this is just going to make sure we have enough entropy, and it's going to make sure the password is complex enough. So if you use too many repeating numbers, or repeating letters or numbers, or it's just real simple patterns, or if it's just you know there's not enough different letters, numbers, uppercase, lowercase, any of that business, well then it's not getting enough entropy score, and then we're going to return error. This minimum entropy here, uh, this is we're setting this constant at the top of our main.go file, and this is just how complex. We're just using the default to 60. If you don't want it to be as particular, just lower that number, or if you really want it to be secure and force the users to have complex, uh, hard to guess passwords, go ahead and increase that number. Okay, so again, if the user does not put in a complex enough password, well, we're gonna get that error is gonna be returned. It's not gonna be equal to nil. We're gonna run this piece of code here. And then on our gen context, we're gonna run the HTML method again, status, bad request. It should have given us a more complex password. Uh, change password to HTML template's gonna be uh, used. And we're gonna be passing in message. And the errors from this one are safe to share with the user. And we have that described in our notes. So uh, just make sure Never, if you're unsure, never pass back an error to the user, especially if it's anything database related because hackers are obviously gonna use that uh, against you. And the return to break out of our handler uh, should you know, this error not be equal to nil. We're gonna go ahead and use the post form method to go ahead and grab our old password and save that into form password. And we need to make sure that this is the password for this user. Like we said, if they may be authenticated, they may be logged in, but for something as uh, critical as changing a password, you know, the same thing like with an exchange, if they're sending money, a lot of times they're gonna ask some questions or re-enter a password or use two-factor authentication or something. But uh, in case some uh, coworker or someone else walks up to their screen while they're still logged in, we don't wanna allow them to change, you know, something like change a password. So just a little extra security. So we're gonna go ahead and use the bcrypt package again. We're gonna compare the hash and the password. The reason we use a hash is because we don't save passwords. We're gonna go ahead and take this hash that we got from our inside our database. And then we're gonna go ahead and compare this with the one that they passed in from the, uh, uh, from the form. So we grab the old password from the form. And if, if there, and if this runs and yes, this hash goes with that password, it's gonna return nil. But we do not want an error if it's the correct thing it's just going to be nil. So if it is nil, which is, you know, they put in the correct password for that hash, well, then we're going to run this piece of code here. Uh, let's say, for instance, that, you know, they put in the wrong password. Well, then this part of code is going to run because this wasn't true and then this didn't run. Well, we're just going to go ahead and say status, you know, pass in that uh, HTTP status code, status unauthorized. Uh, if you put in the wrong password, I'll, you know, that's, we don't, we don't believe that's you. 
So again, the, we're sending back to the change password uh, template and just tell them, hey, check password is entered correctly. So let's say that they do pass in the correct password and we'd run our bcrypt compare, has, uh, compare hash and password and it returns nil. If error is equal to nil, we're gonna go ahead and run this chunk of code here. And we're gonna go ahead and create our hash. Uh, we have to create our new hash and save it into the database. So we know that the user is who they are and they created a password that is complex enough. So we're gonna go ahead and use bcrypt again. And this time we're gonna, instead of using the compare method, we're gonna use the generate from password. So we're gonna go ahead and pass in our new password and we're gonna go ahead and use uh, for our cost, we're just using the default cost. If you're more par uh, paranoid or worried about, you know, like government state trying to, trying to crack your, you know, break some stuff, uh, go ahead and use uh, a number higher than the uh, default cost. And, and of course this number as computers advance, that number will have to go up anyway. And if we generate that password successfully, we'll just keep going down the code. But let's say for instance, we run into an error. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and pass a message to ourselves. We're gonna go ahead and send the user uh, back, you know, was a server error. We had, this is something that we didn't expect. We're going to go ahead and change, uh, use, uh, we're going to go ahead and use the change password template again. And again, passing in a message, there was an issue changing the password. So in case this is just in case we have an issue generating our password and we're going to go ahead and change that hash into a string from a slice of byte. That way we can save it into our user data type, our variable, uh, you of type user. And then we're going to use the method update password hash. And this is just going to go ahead and update it in the database. So update users, which is our table set and our field, our field is pass or column is password hash. And we're going to pass in a, a hash and we're going to go ahead and pass in an ID. If we run into an error preparing that statement, we're going to go ahead and return this error. And then of course, you know, if we have that error here, uh, we're going to send that user back to change password, but let's go back to update function there and we defer the statement close. Go ahead and execute our statement. Should we run into an error executing our statement? We're going to go ahead and return that error. All right. So let's say, uh, this runs as we hope it does and we do not run into an error. So this doesn't have to run. And, oh, if we do run into an error, we do need a return. Sorry about that. So if we run into an error, that return is gonna go ahead and break us out of our, you know, change password post handler. It's gonna go ahead and break us out of there. But if everything runs fine, well, we wanna go ahead and go ahead and use off our gen context, the HTML method. We're going to pass in HTTP status code. Okay. We're going to go ahead and send them to the login page and the message that we're going to be passing them inside of our gen H our map is password successfully updated. Please log in. So, so anyway, uh, fairly straightforward. A lot of the same stuff that we had from the previous ones. Uh, just want to go over the code in case anyone was curious, but anyway, uh, big thanks. Uh, been seeing an uptick in the channel. So, uh, greatly appreciate the help guys. So thank you. And, uh, just please keep sharing. So, uh, if you like the content, please like share, subscribe and click the not notification bell. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.